before people start having a go at me, those of you who know me, know that I live in Yorkshire. And the last time I looked, there was no coast to Yorkshire. And you're right, there isn't. But for the last six, seven weeks, I have been at my parents um, on parent duty because they're a little bit elderly, bless them, and we are suffering and struggling a little bit. Now, luckily, South Yorkshire is in tier three, and so is Lincolnshire. So I have no concerns about being here. It's kind of handy in a way because it means I can get to the coast. <laughs> I'd really rather I couldn't get to the coast, I'd really rather I was at home because that would mean my parents are okay. But such is life. And I've come down to see something which is just out of shot for you guys. Oh, and I'm parked right in front of a dead fish. That's not very nice, is it? It is a time and tide bell. And I've never seen it before. I've never really heard of it before at this particular location. So I thought whilst I was in the vicinity, I would take a quick peek over here. Bloody battery's running out. Excuse me. Hey dear. I wasn't, in fact there's two dead fishes down here. That's really sad. Well, it's really not my day today. The lock on the van has failed. And then the camera's toppled over. Ha! So that's been quite an expensive outing somehow. Hey-ho, such is life. Now, I think I was really interrupted by the camera falling over. I've broken the six stop out because I'd like to smooth the water out. Even though we've got no light and no color, as you can see, we're still getting a bit of reflection in the sand. With the, just the grad on, I was getting some nice streakiness as the waves were receding. And I will turn around and let you have a look at this thing in a minute, but I'm just running a six stop exposure. I'm shooting at F1, uh, F9, ISO 160. I've moved up a little bit from my normal 100 simply because it is quite dark. It's murky and misty and, well not misty, but just murky and yucky. Yeah, getting a little bit of a reflection in that there sand. It's a very strange creature. I say, I've not heard of it. I just happened to be looking on Google Maps and I saw reference and I thought, oh, what's that? Yeah, that kind of works. Currently, composition-wise, it is on the left-hand side of the image. It's crying out for square crop. It really is tide is coming in further and further there can't be much more to come in sorry i'm just having a look around to see if i can see some color in the sky because i say we can only be about 10 minutes off of sunset there is actually another photographer here as you can see the beach is pretty empty it's a fabulous little spot this except for the dead creatures and I can see another dead creature up there that looks decidedly like a seal. Well, I can't believe I've parked my tripod where there's two whole dead fish, one dead fish head and a crab shell <laughs> to look where I'm going. Right. Right, I'll spin you around and I'll show you what on earth it is I'm shooting. So as you can see it is a rather grey, murky day. The water is the most disgusting colour ever. But this is the tide and time bell. Now with some light on that, it'll look absolutely stunning. We're not going to get any light tonight, I don't think. But it does look fabulous. It really does. Oh, it's 
so bright, isn't it? Let's see if we can. That's better. Now, because it is sunset, there's me as a photographer. It's obviously the ambient light is dropping the whole time. There is nothing else within walking distance to grab a shot of while I'm here. So I'm just going to concentrate on this solid, solitary rather, object. And see how many compositions I can get out. It's going to be really boring. I'm going to have like four compositions. I've just decided once this... I've moved slightly because the tide was kind of coming in. The tide was kind of coming in bottom right hand side of the image because it's on a slight curve or a slight angle. I thought that would work quite well, but I've just seen if I re raise the tripod up slightly, then just where the bell joins its support is where the horizon, it doesn't look like it in here because this looks a bit different, but it's true. The horizon cuts straight across where the bell joins its supports. So that would be quite nice. <sighs> We're getting the old wave coming in a little bit deeper, a little bit further. I'm all of a dither, but it is good to be able to get close and just clear my head. Right, I'm gonna put this down and move compositions any minute now. Oh. I've just bumped into somebody else who kind of recognised me from the tube. Excuse me if it's a bit windy. Oh, I've lost my shutter release. <laughs> the ambient light is dropping tremendously quickly. I'm getting the image that I want, but I'm having to drop the f-stop down. I'm down now at f5.6 and I'm shooting at two seconds. It's giving me a little bit more like something that I'm after. Tide is on its way out. But are we still getting that odd seventh, seventh wave or tenth wave coming in? And I'm still aiming to try and get the streaks in the water. Yeah. Yeah, this is a crappy little spot and I'm definitely going to come back for sunrise. I'm really frustrated that sunset wasn't as good as last night's because last night's was just fabulous and that looks a lot brighter on here than it is in reality I'm not getting any form of sunset tonight at all but every now and then we get a wave that comes in yes i've got one that i really really like and yet I know I keep putting you on the wonk because my camera's bust, my gimbal's out of charge and I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm shooting <laughs> rather than talking to you lot. Right, I just need to change something, probably my ISO because I need to let more light in because the bell is getting really, really dark now. I'll be back in a sec. Now just for giggles, although we've lost nearly all the ambient light, I've popped the 10 to 20 on because the tide, the wind's picking up. And that's, although the tide is receding, we're getting some bigger waves, which is giving me lots more streaky goodness in the water. The 10 to 20 has enabled me to get a much wider point of view. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Dead centered, dead square in the middle with lines coming in and going out. I'm on a five second exposure. I'm at F5 and I'm at ISO 250, simply because I'm losing all the light. But the waves as they come in, don't come in straight. They come in with angles. Yeah, liking that. And I'm not going home until the last of the light's gone. Right, I'm just gonna change composition so I need to refocus back in a minute. moved slightly because the waves were coming in slightly skew width. I got no water on the right hand side and I got a lot of water on the left. And the... <laughs> this is fabulous! They really are still coming in tremendously well. And I'm getting some lovely shapes and patterns. They're not all coming in straight. The one that I really liked 
did come in straight and I got some lovely streakiness. Actually, as it was coming towards me rather than going away. Oh, let's just have a quick nosy. Yes. And what I'm going for is very high key. Possibly going to be mono, but I'm actually not disliking a high key colour on these. I might take the grad off in a second. I do like that. And as the waves are crashing around the feet, they're swirling and they send the, the water off in different angles. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pack up and go in a minute because I can't remember which way the car is. Right, I'm gonna call it a wrap. It's been short and sweet, I'm sorry. That's the other reason I like shooting sunrise is because you just get so much more time. Yes, you have to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning, but you can have two, three hours shooting. Whereas I know you get golden hour at night and then you get blue hour. I'm really not keen on blue hour, but I don't think you get as much time in the evenings as you do in the mornings. So from the time and tide bell, I'll catch you all again. Take care, bye bye.